What's going on engineers? Today we're talking about Linux cron jobs. Although even though the video title is Linux cron jobs, it's also going to work fine on Unix as well as any Unix-like systems which will also include macOS. So first, if you don't know what a cron job is, a cron job is basically a process that is designed to run at some particular time or at different intervals of time. The way cron jobs are edited are through a command and a file called a cron tab. And just as a point of history, cron tab gets its name from one half is cron, which is, comes from the Greek word chronos, which is another word for time, and then tab, which is, just means table. So it's literally timetable. Once we jump in and start editing the cron tab, you'll see that it really is a table of times and then processes to run. Cron jobs is one of those things where if you're going to do any type of systems administration on a Unix or Unix-like operating system, you're going to have to understand this because you're going to come across it. It's used pretty often in things like backups, which you'll want to run at a particular interval. But often if you're building complex software, especially one that provides some sort of service, you're going to have scripts that run every so often that are related to that application. Okay, let's jump in. So let's first take a look at the, the file format for a cron tab. Cron tab is nothing more than a list of times and processes to run. And the format by which these occur is these five pieces of data, and then the user, and then the command that you want to run. So let's look at our very first cron tab entry, and then we'll analyze exactly what each one does. So a simple cron tab entry would be star 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 star, and then slash path slash to slash script. So this will run is this will run this command every minute. So let's discuss now what each of these five pieces of data mean and then why it runs every minute. So the first piece of data here is going to be which minutes it should run. The second one is which hours it should run. The third one is which days of the month it should run. The fourth one is which month it should run. And the fifth one is which days of the week it should run. So in this case, by putting five stars, what you're really saying is run all minutes, all hours, all days of the month, all months, and all days of the week. And we, when you combine all those together, what it really means is run every minute. It's probably worth knowing at this point that the, the quickest frequency of time you can do with a cron tab is once a minute. If you wanted something that was, say, every 30 seconds, you'd have to execute a script once a minute, and then in that script, you'd have to do something, delay 30 seconds, and then run it again. Now before we look at the rest of these cron tab entries, I wanted to show everybody how to put one of these entries into the cron tab. But to do that, you have to switch over to your terminal. Now the only command you'll need here is cron tab, and there's three switches that you're going to use that do different things. And they're going to be the primary ones you'll use. So you'll type cron tab, and then you can supply the switches here. The first switch that we're going to look at is dash E, which says edit the current cron tab. And it's worth noting here that every user on the system has its own cron tab. So in this case, I'm logged in as user Brian, which means when I do cron tab E, I'm going to be adding the cron tab for user Brian. If I switch to a different user, I'll see an empty cron tab, even if I had something in the cron tab for user Brian. So simply type cron tab E and hit enter, and you'll open up into just a just an editor, whatever's on your system that is your default editor. Now the way adding cron tabs works is it gives you a file. It's a temporary file. That's why you see slash temp slash cron tab dot and some random text slash cron tab is because what it does is it takes your current cron tab and lets you edit it. And then once you're done editing it and you save it, it will check that file for errors. And if there are errors, it won't actually install that cron tab. It'll give you an option and say, would you like to go edit your file and fix the problem or do you want to just discard it? And what that makes it be is that you can't have an erroneous cron tab. Like you can't put one in there that, that doesn't work. It's, it's either a valid cron tab and then it gets installed into the system or it's an invalid cron tab because it failed some, some parsing and then it lets you either fix it or discard it. But in no case does it actually install a bad cron tab. So depending on your system, I'm on Xubuntu, which means I have this, this kind of, you know, commenting that just shows how it works. But depending on your system, like if you're on a CentOS system, it'll just be a blank file. It won't give you any of this documentation. But all you do now is just go into the open space here, doesn't really matter what line, and then you can, you know, five stars to run it for every minute, and then path to script, and then that's the end of that. All you'll do now is just exit, save, and you'll see it says installing new cron tab, and that means it's now in the system and it's ready to run. The next switch is going to be dash L, and that will list the current cron tab. So if you do cron tab dash L, it'll just output exactly what's in the current cron tab. 
And the last one's going to be cron tab dash r, which will remove the current cron tab and then get rid of anything you had in there. So now if we edit again, cron tab dash e, we can see that it's now empty. It got rid of the stuff that I put in previously. In this file, you just do one per line. You can spread them out. New lines don't really matter. And then you can use the pound sign for a comment. If you want to say like, you know, these are for application one. And then you can, you know, do whatever script here. And then application two. And then so on and so forth. And you can just you can just keep doing that. So they don't have to be exactly one after another. So now we've looked at how to use the cron tab command and how to edit, show, and remove a cron tab. Let's look at a bunch of different cron jobs with some increasingly complex formatting and just try to understand exactly why things run and at what time. So the first one we looked at was every minute. The second one we're going to look at is every minute as user Tim. So what you can do is you can specify the user that the job should run as. However, this is optional. You don't have to put it, but if you do, you'll put it right after the time and it'll run as that user. If you don't put it, it'll run as the user for whoever owns that cron tab. The next time sequence we're going to look at is every hour at the top of the hour. So that's going to be zero star 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 star. Basically what this says is run at the zero minute every hour every day, every month, and every day of the week. So this will run at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and so on. Now let's modify it to run just once a night, run at 11 p.m. So in this case, it's going to be 0, 23. Remember, it's a 24-hour time. And then star, star, star. So this says run at every 0 minute, run at every 23rd hour, which is 11 p.m., run every day, every month, and every day of the week. Next one we're going to look at is run the first of the month at 3 p.m. every month. So this one's going to be 0, 15, 1, star, star. And this says run at 0 minute, run at 3 p.m., and run at the first day of the month, but also run every month and every day of the week. Next one we'll look at kind of a new syntax. And up until now, we've only seen single digits, like 0, 15, 1, but the other thing you can do is you can specify specific values that you want to use. So for this one, we want to run a job every day at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 p.m., and 2 p.m. So to do that, we're going to do 0, and then we're going to do 8, 10, 12, 14, and then star, star, star. So this says run at the 0 minute, run at the 8, 10, 12, and 14 hours, run every day, every month, and every day of the week. The next one we're going to look at here is every half hour, and this is again some new syntax. This is another way to specify a bunch of different values, except in this case it's going to be step values. So to do that, you can do asterisk, slash, and then number. And what this says is, as long as the number here is a multiple of this value, then it'll run. So in this case, it'll run at the zero minute, and then the 30 minute which will, in effect, cause it to run every half hour. So, of course, you could swap this out for a 5 if you wanted to run it every 5 minutes, or a 10, which would run it every 10 minutes. You could also put something like an 11 here, but that wouldn't necessarily mean every 11 minutes. It would mean at the 0 minute, the 11 minute, 22, 33, 44, and 55, but then, you know, 5 minutes later it would run at 0 again. The next entry we're going to look at is one that involves a day of the week. So this is going to be every Tuesday at 8 a.m. So this one's going to be 0, 8, star, star, 2, which says right at the 0 minute in the 8th hour every day, every month, but on day of week 2. So to understand what 2 is, we got to go back up to our format here. So a day of the week could either be 0 through 6, which would run Sunday to Saturday, but on some systems, it could be 1 to 7, which would run Monday to Sunday. The good thing about this is you don't have to worry about necessarily what system you're on, because, for instance, 1 will always be Monday on either system. It's just on some systems, the 7 might also be Sunday. So 0 and 7 might be Sunday, but 1 through 6 is going to be the same days no matter what. It's going to be Monday through Saturday. So our 2 is basically you know, 0 is Sunday, 1 is Monday, and then 2 is Tuesday. So down here, if we want to run every Tuesday, we put a 2 here. And the last one we're going to look at is kind of a complex one, but we're also going to use a new range of numbers. So this is going to execute on the first Wednesday of every month, or more accurately, the first Wednesday of each month at 11 p.m. 
And the way we're going to accomplish this is by doing 0, 23, 1 to 7. And we haven't seen this yet. If we do 1 to 7, it basically means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So it's a range of numbers. And then star, and then 3. So this says run at the 0 minute, run at the 23rd hour, run at days 1 through 7, run all months, and then run days of weeks that are Wednesday. And the reason this does the first Wednesday of each month is because you're saying only run in the first seven days of the month. And then within that first seven days of the month, run on the Wednesday. So by doing it this way, you can accomplish running something on the first day of the month. The last thing I want to show everybody is just this website I found. It's called crontab.guru. And they're not paying me to show this. It's just something I found. And on here, you can kind of see a visual representation of a particular crontab entry. So this is a good way to experiment with a couple different things. So you can say like star 10 to 20, star, 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 and it'll read it out to you. Run at every minute past every hour from 10 through 20. So it's saying run at you know, 10.01, 10.02, 10.03, .03, so on and so forth. And likewise, it can do simple things too. You know, if we do star, 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 you know, it just says it every minute. You can also click random and it'll give you kind of a random one. So this is at, you know, 12.05 a.m. in August. The last thing we're going to talk about is a couple non-standard ones, like yearly, annually, monthly, and weekly. You can use these in place of, like, if you want to run something hourly, you know, zero, star, 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 then essentially what this is saying is run every hour. And it's the same as if you did at hourly, but those only run on some versions of crontab i mean if you're using a, a very modern version of linux it probably works but if you want complete wide support then you'll want to just use this version but it's up to you if it supports it and you know it supports it then you can use hourly in place of that and that's really all there is for cron jobs it, it's sort of weird syntax when when you first look at it but once you start understanding how it works then it's it's not too bad and we're done that's cron jobs so hopefully everybody learned something from this and as Always, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments, and I will see you on the next video.